Here's the next part of metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. So first in analyzing people who have particular blood gases. Let's say that we have a particular blood gas here and we say, oh, here's the normal pH, 7.40. Here is the normal PCO2 of 40. Here's the normal oxygen level at 100. Here's the normal bicarbonate level at 24. The first thing that we're gonna do when we're analyzing a blood gas, like we look at this one, and we say, oh, the first thing that we do when we analyze a blood gas is we analyze by saying, what is the pH? What's the pH? If the pH is low, less than 7.40, we know that we have an acidosis. If the pH is high, high pH means above 7.40, we know we have an alkalosis. Okay, acidosis, alkalosis. So here, we have a pH that's high, 7.56. So then the next thing to do when you see the pH is high and there's an alkalosis, as you look at the CO2, the PCO2, and you look at the bicarbonate, and you say, okay, it's an alkalosis because the pH is above 7.4. Now, if the PCO2 is low, less than 40, we know that the main problem is a respiratory alkalosis. If the bicarbonate is high, we know that the main problem is a metabolic alkalosis. So we can look at this person and say, the pH is high. This is a alkalosis. The CO2 is low. So this must be a primary respiratory alkalosis. The bicarbonate is normal, so this means that it's an acute respiratory alkalosis because if it wasn't acute, it would be compensated. Again, we are looking at a blood gas. Here's the normal values. A normal pH is 740, a normal CO2 is 40, normal O2 is 100, normal bicarb is 24. If the pH is low, it's an acidosis. If the pH is high, it's an alkalosis. All right, the pH is high. If the CO2 is low, it's a respiratory alkalosis. If the bicarb is high, it's a metabolic alkalosis. This person has a normal bicarbonate. That makes this an acute or uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. If it wasn't acute, if it was chronic, it would be compensated. So acute respiratory alkalosis can be pain or fever or anxiety or I'm, uh, I have anemia, sudden anemia, or I'm running around the block, or even in fact an acute asthma attack that makes me breathe faster all of a sudden because it takes 12 or 24 hours for the kidneys to compensate. If the bicarb was high, it would be a primary metabolic alkalosis. And a metabolic, al al metabolic alkalosis could be things like vomiting. I'm vomiting up my acid. Anything that increases my aldosterone. Remember from the dim dark past to the last section, aldosterone makes you excrete acid. Aldosterone makes you, aldosterone makes you excrete acid. So Kahn syndrome makes me excrete acid. Cushing syndrome has some effect like aldosterone. Licorice is like eating aldosterone. Do you know that real black licorice has aldosterone-like effect? Or anything that causes a volume depletion, like Barter's syndrome. That's the inability of the loop of Henle to absorb sodium chloride. That's, the in that's like celiac disease of your loop of Henle, to absorb sodium and chloride. Barter's syndrome. Vomiting. GI loss. Anything that increases.
alkalosis. Oh, low potassium itself. Potassium comes out of the cells and hydrogen ions goes into the cells. Volume depletion. Anything that causes volume depletion causes an increase in my aldosterone level. Okay. Now this next one. The pH is low. It's less than 7.40. So we know that this is an acidosis because the pH is low. So we look next at the PCO2 and the bicarbonate. And we say, hey man, if the PCO2 is high above 40, that the primary problem is a respiratory acidosis. The primary problem is a respiratory acidosis. If we look at the bicarb and it's low, less than 24, we know that the primary problem is a metabolic acidosis. Well, this CO2 is low, so this can't be a respiratory acidosis. The bicarb is less than 24. So since the bicarbonate is low, this has to be a primary metabolic acidosis. It's a primary metabolic, it's a primary metabolic acidosis. So, if you have a primary, if you have a primary metabolic, primary metabolic acidosis, ooh, primary metabolic acidosis, lactate, that's anything that makes blood pressure low, sepsis, blood pressure low, anaphylactic shock, neurogenic shock, cardiogenic shock, infections, gram-negative endotoxin raises the lactate. It's a sign of anaerobic metabolism. It's a sign, it's a sign of anaerobic metabolism, okay, with lactic acidosis, anaerobic metabolism. Aspirin, although aspirin can start out with respiratory alkalosis, you also get, end up getting a metabolic acidosis too, because it's actually a lactic acidosis. Aspirin poisons your mitochondria and you get a metabolic acidosis by poisoning those mitochondria. The toxic alcohols, methanol and ethanol, and ethylene and glycol, methanol and ethanol, and ethylene and glycol, methanol and ethanol, and ethylene and glycol, methanol and ethanol, and ethylene and glycol. <sighs> Methanol's metabolized to formic acid. Ethylene glycol is metabolized to oxalic acid. Now, also in these metabolic acidoses is renal tubular acidosis and diarrhea. How are you going to distinguish these from renal tubular acidosis and diarrhea? <gasps> By the anion gap. All of the ones I'm giving you here have an elevated anion gap. These are all people with low serum bicarbonates. They all have an elevated anion gap. Okay. Uremia, dead kidneys. Uremia, uremia, and uremia and dead kidneys causes the accumulation of those waste products like acid. Now you can't tell from the blood gas which one this is. This blood gas can be sepsis, it could be deep diabetic diabetic ketoacidosis, it could be methanol and ethanol and ethylene glycol, it could be hypoperfusion, you can't tell. You can't tell which one it is just from the blood gas. You'd have to be given other history and physical. Now, if the CO2 is high, the most common cause of that respiratory acidosis is certainly COPD and emphysema. But anything that causes decreased ventilation will cause you to have an elevated PCO2. Now, the compensations. The compensation for a respiratory acidosis would be a metabolic alkalosis high bicarbonate. The compensation for a metabolic acidosis would be <gasps> decreased PCO2, respiratory alkalosis. The compensation for metabolic acidosis is a decreased PCO2, respiratory alkalosis. The compensation for respiratory alkalosis would be metabolic 
acidosis, the kidney would kick out bicarbonate. And the compensation for metabolic problems is a respiratory problems. The compensation for respiratory problems is metabolic problems. The compensation for respiratory alkalosis is metabolic acidosis. The compensation for metabolic alkalosis is respiratory acidosis. The compensation for metabolic problems is respiratory problems. The compensation for respiratory problems is metabolic problems. So let's look at this next one. Let's do another one. And let's say that we have this, 7.30, 70, PCO2 is 70, O2 is 70, bicarbonate 37. PCO2 is 70, O2 is 70, bicarb is 37. I'm making this stuff up. What is it? Well, it must be an acidosis because the pH is less than 7.40. Okay, I have an acidosis, then the next thing to do is to look at the CO2 and the bicarbonate. Since this CO2 is elevated, the primary problem must be a respiratory acidosis. The primary problem must be a respiratory acidosis. Here, what is this increase in the bicarbonate then? The increase in the bicarbonate is metabolic compensation. That's the compensation for this respiratory acidosis. Now, blood gases and acid-base disturbances take practice in terms of interpreting blood gases. But if you start with this, and it comes down to, what is the pH? Next, what is the CO2 and what is the bicarbonate and which one matches? This will tell you what is the primary problem. And that's how you'd be able to answer the question on what is the most likely diagnosis. All of these metabolic acidoses have an increased anion gap. Lactate, aspirin, methanol, ethanol, and ethylene glycol, uremia, DKA, have an increased anion gap. And you can't distinguish them based on the blood gas. See you in the next section.